Hi, Fresh Manor 11 on the 17th of October. I shared this talk that I'm bringing today with my church on Sunday. My name is Jeff Goodwin, a Christian pastor in the church in the UK. Now please excuse me for reading this, but I have a lot to say and I want to say it carefully in these very troubled times, of course. In this talk, I will be quoting extensively from the writings of Moses, the respected prophet to Christians, Jews and Muslims alike. If you have a copy of his writings, please follow what he said in Genesis about the relationship between Abraham and Abimelech, the king of the Philistines. When I spoke in the previous talk about Hamas making a trumpet call, I did not know that that was what they had actually done. It's just seven days from their committing their atrocities and as I type there are tens of thousands of folk on the streets of our cities in the UK demonstrating their support for the Palestinians. Hopefully not for Hamas. I myself joined them on the streets of my town. I was the only uh, British man that I could see in the crowd. I could not see all of the crowd, but all of the crowd that I could see. I was the only white man <laughs> there. I have recorded two previous attempts at this talk, but rejected them both, believing the below is what God wants me to share. Last night, these notes were started two or three days ago, okay? <laughs> so that, there's a little, if you're wondering what the dates mean, it's mean that's all it means. It'll just take me three days to, to put these notes together. Uh, last night, I watched a TV news interview with Yossi Balin, a former Israeli justice minister and a negotiator with the surrounding Arab states and Yasser Arafat uh, of the now extinct, I believe, Palestinian Liberation Organization some years ago, of course. He expressed his opinion that because Hamas's stated position was for the extinction of the Jewish state, there was no neg negotiation option at the present time and that the Israel Defence Force had no option but to go in and kill them. He accepted there would be civilian casualties on both sides, but the removing Hamas would be for the benefit of both Israeli and Palestinians for the future. He saw the removal of the, the, the civilian Palestinians from the uh, from the north to the south, uh, from the field of war, necessary for reducing casualties and deaths. But going forward, uh, he saw a new Palestinian authority, uh, authority should be installed he named the PLO for this uh, as his option. The people would all come back and a, too quickly and a two-state solution would be adopted and a massive building project would get underway. My heart's desire is for a, a one-state uh, situation, that the, 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 the brothers, as I call them, the Jews and the Arabs in that area, are all descended from Abraham. And I desire uh, no division of states. I desire one, one state for, for them all to live together as a, in full trust of each other. As so many, as maybe half a million Arabs are doing in the present state of Israel with citizen rights and all sorts of things. So all this, he says uh, this time, to be done in a period of months rather than years. In the past, Yossi had been involved in negotiations with the PLO and at that time, I had seen something in the scriptures that caused me to write to the Israeli government, Yasser Arafat, and the negotiations team. I heard nothing back, of course. Uh, <clears throat> because I feel the Lord is calling us to read his word more seriously, and because I saw the senior BBC war correspondent, Lise Doucette, conducting her news presentations on a spot that must be in the town called Yara, with the city of Gaza in the background. I was reminded that that was where Abraham and Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, had met 
and sworn oaths together. I wondered and have now come to believe that these oaths can be considered to be still valid and be called upon to help moves towards reconciliation and peaceful, not to say happy, restored relationships. God is able to do that even when relationships are so broken as they must be at the moment. We do hope for peace in our time. Or may we say with the psalmist, I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And so we pray for it, the land of Israel and the Arab nations around. So here we go with the Bible study. Just today, rehearsing the story. Abram, Isaac and Abimelech, who was king of the Philistines in their day. Genesis chapters 20 to 26 is where the story is written in full. Please be happy to read it with your own eyes for yourself. Your eyes will, will allow it to come into your body in power. God's word in power in your life. Please follow in your Bible if you have one. So reminding us, Genesis chapter 12, 12, verses 2, 3 and 7. The scene for us is set for this talk. The scene for us is set and Abraham and Sarah have left their original homes and are now in the land that God is promising to give them, as well as blessing them with many children and blessing all the peoples on the earth through them. Then on to Genesis chapter 20, verse 2. At a place called Gerah, where at least the set was standing, as she had Gaza in the background. Uh, as a, at a place called Gerah, Abram asked Sarah to pretend to be his sister. Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, took Sarah for his wife. But Abimelech is a God-fearing man, and God protected him from sinning with her. In verse 14, after reprimanding Abraham, Abimelech returns Sarah to him, giving him money and sheep, goats and male and female slaves, saying in verse 15, my land is before you, live wherever you like. My land is before you, live wherever you like. Then in chapter 21, uh, Isaac was born to Abraham and Sarah. And in verse 8, the boy Ishmael and Hagar are sent away. But they go with God promising to bless them. In verse 22, Abimelech recognises God is with Abram and seeks a treaty with him. So he says in verses 23 and 24, and I quote, Now swear to me here before God that you will not deal falsely with me or my children or my descendants. Show to me and the country where you are living as an alien the same kindness that I have shown to you. Now I know as I'm saying these things, lots of, lots of things have happened since then that have not, not, not been helpful on either side. But, um, but we, I just want to go back to the beginning and see where, where these guys were at the beginning and, and believe that's where God wants them to be today. But they want to, wants to bring them back to where his heart for them is. Uh, so Abimelech uh, asks for Abraham to swear, um, I'll read it again, Now swear to me before God that you will not deal falsely with me or my children or my descendants. Show to me on the country where you are living as an alien the same kindness that I have shown to you. And then in verse 24, Abraham said, I swear it. This is a sworn oath between two godly men. After going on, after their herdsmen had a couple of arguments about water for their livestock, uh, in verse 27, so Abraham brought sheep and cattle and gave them to Abimelech, and the two men made a treaty. Then at verse 31, as a witness to the oath they had sworn, they named the place Beersheba. And in reality, Beersheba is just a few miles down from Gera, just across from Gaza. They're all in the same place. 
today, still there. Named the place Beersheba, which means well of seven or well of the oath. Today, Beersheba is just down the road from Gera and remains as a witness to that oath. And verse 34, Abraham, with this oath and obvious goodwill between him and Abimelech, stayed in the land of the Philistines for a long time. Him having lots and lots of herds and cattle and sheep and things, and as did Abimelech. But they weren't arguing anymore. They were living happily together. So, today I call on all parties to any disputes in that land to respect the oath that these two godly men entered into on behalf of their children and their children's children and to live together as friends. I invoke that oath for, for peace in our time. But there is more. So let's see how the story continues. In chapter 22, God tested Abraham by asking him to sacrifice Isaac. Abraham passed the test. And in verse 16, verse 16 God said, I swear by myself again. You see, God's swearing. God's got a, 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 a portion in this oath, in these covenants. They're inspired by him. I swear by myself. And then he basically reaffirms the promises for Isaac that he'd given to Abraham in, in the previous times. Uh, in chapter 23, at some point, Abraham had moved to live in Hebron with the Hittites. Sarah died and Abraham asked to buy a piece of land for her burial. Now the Hittites, now note the Hittites' very personal response. These people are living together in friendship. So in five, verses 5 and 6, the Hittites replied to Abraham's request. Sir, listen to us. You are a mighty prince among us. Bury your dead in the choicest of our tombs. None of us will refuse you his tomb for burying your dead. How much closer could they be? And Sarah was buried in the field legally bought by Abram from Ephron in Machpelah, somewhere near Hebron. Chapter 24. Abraham finds a wife for Isaac with his family who were living in Haran in the north, probably in the southeastern corner of today's Turkey. Chapter 25 records the death of Abraham. Before he died, he took a second wife, Keturah, who had children that as they grew, he sent to live in the east. Ishmael, his, his son, by Hagar the Egyptian, with all his children, went to live near the border with Egypt. Just to reiterate again, God had a great desire for the blessing of Ishmael as well. Though it also does record in all honesty that Ishmael was a bit of a... And Esau, the other player of, of, in Abraham's family line, um, uh, who sold and Esau, who sold his inheritance rights to his younger brother Jacob, prospered. He prospered in that time, and went to live across the Jordan in Seir, South Jordan, as it is today. Chapter twenty-six is of most interest to us today. So, wait, verse one: There is a famine in the land, and Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gera. Same place, same place. There's a famine in the land and Isaac, Isaac, you see, Abram's son, Isaac, went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gera. Once again, like his father, Isaac got Rebekah, his wife, to pretend to be his sister. Abimelech found out and rebuked Isaac. Isaac prospered, but again the herdsmen quarrel over water but Isaac and his people move away and found room. No room for Jesus, was there, as I thought about that. 
um, <laughs> but they found room <laughs> room was found and they all were lived then happily uh, alongside each other and then in verse 28 seeing that well verse 28 Abimelech came to Isaac in a sense to confirm the treaty he had previously made with his father Abraham so I quote the words he said to Isaac we clearly saw we clearly see that the Lord is with you so he's we said there ought to be a sworn agreement between us and you Isaac let us make a treaty with you that you will do us no harm just as we did not molest you but always treated you well and sent you away in peace and now you are blessed by the Lord and then verse 30 Isaac then made a feast for them and they ate and drank early the next morning the men swore an oath to each other then Isaac sent them on their way and they left him in peace and all this took place again in Beersheba the well of the oath Beersheba stands as a whole town as a witness to something that happened to, to some oaths that were sworn a long time ago its abiding presence is the encouragement that these oaths remain active as far as God is concerned and should therefore be made active in the lives of the of the, of the parties that, that, are, that are seeking to to live together peaceably they're not they're not struggling at that time themselves so again i believe these oaths to be in place today and call the parties to come together and live in close friendship as i know that many are doing as a person at a personal level many on both camps are affirming their love for the others there is one other covenant i need to show you the whole story for this is in chapter 31 Jacob having cheated his brother Esau out of his inheritance had to run away and he went north to his father's family in Haran over the next 20 years or so Jacob married four wives and had 11 of his 12 children then God told him to go back to the land of Abram and Isaac his father and verse 25 Jacob with his family set off but Laban was annoyed at their leaving followed and caught them up when they had got to the hill country of Gilead that's across the Jordan River in the present in the present day Jordan they argued a bit and ended up setting up a pillar and a heap to, of stones as a witness to another new covenant they made in the north of the land you see and in verse 52, here is the covenant, Laban speaking. They've set up a pillar and, they, and the relatives have all put a stone to it. So they've all put their hands to this covenant. It's not just Laban and, and, uh, and Jacob, it's the two families. This heap is a witness and this pillar is a witness that I will not go past this heap to harm you. And that you will not go past this heap and pillar to my side to harm me. May the God of Abraham and the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge between us. So Jacob took an oath in the name of the fear of his father Isaac. He offered a sacrifice there in the hill country and invited his relatives to a meal. Then Laban left and returned home leaving Jacob and his family to return to the promised land. So again we affirm that these founding fathers, under God's guidance, put a covenant in place that is still valid and helpful. That Israel should not go out to harm the nations on their northern borders, and that those nations should not cross over to harm them. Being my God, I believe the God of Abraham to consider all of us to be his children, every single one of us on the planet. And he wants all of us in every place and in every time to only act in loving ways towards each other. In 
in the name of the God of Abraham. I plead for peace in the Middle East.